All righty. Now, what kind of things would you want to do with this data? So these are quiz marks for this class, actually. Uh, oh, no. This is from Math 121. It's a first year calculus class. Uh, so we have quiz marks and we have exam marks. What do you think, as an instructor or as a student, you'd be interested in computing or showing about this data? Graphing them. How do they compare to you? So what kind of graph would be a natural choice for plotting these kinds of things? Yeah. A histogram, yeah. Like, where do these marks fall? Well, a histogram shows us where the bumps are, where the most common marks are. So, let's do that. All right. So, conveniently, the command hist is the command that generates histograms in MATLAB. And we don't need both of these every time. And so we'll do the histogram of, we did this last class, but a reminder, I want to get the first column. That'll give me the grades for the quizzes. So I want all the rows. So I put a colon in there, and I want a one for the column. So it's all the rows, first column. And if we run that, we get a nice histogram. Lovely. And we can see that quizzes are actually pretty straightforward. Most people do very, very well on them. Uh, but there's a tail off down to the other end. So immediately we get a sense of this kind of data. The second thing we could do is just go back, change it, and plot the exam grades. And those, let's do a close all at the top here. And we'll put a semicolon here. There we go. Run. The exam grades, as you might expect, are a little lumpier, a little more normal looking in terms of normal bell curve looking. You know, cluster around 40-ish, and then tails on both sides. OK. So one of the things you might do, and we talked a bit about this uh, early on when we first did our first class in this, actually, is we might want both these graphs on the same screen, on the screen at the same time. So one of the ways to do that is to use the figure command. If you look at the top bar here, it's a little reminder. Hey, this is figure one. And unsurprisingly, you can also make a figure two, if you like. So what we do is we use the command figure one that says, create a window for me. And then the plot command that comes after the histogram here fills it into the histogram. But then we can say, on figure two, which will be a separate one, Let's plot the <coughs> quiz grades. And what that'll do for us is pop up two different windows. One's figure two, one's figure one. And we can drag them around wherever we want on the screen. We can now compare. Oh, yeah. The quiz grades look very different from the distribution of the test grade or the exam grades. So we can learn some information there. And that's the figure command. Now, that, unfortunately, is a little tedious. Let me show you why that's a bit of a pain. Mainly because when we run it, <laughs> I want to look at these side by side. I know that's my next step. But MATLAB just puts both windows right on top of each other. So every single time I run this and change something, I'm going to have to go dragging this thing over and out of the way and dragging this thing over and out of the way. It's a little bit of a pain. Uh, I know Macs have one way to do this. There is a nice way if you use your Windows command keys. If you hold Window and then run, type left and right, it'll put two side blocks. Uh, it'll fill up the left hand and right hand side of your Windows machines. That being said, it's still a bit of a pain. So what I'd like to do is put both of these in the same window. I'd like to have one window and have these two things side by side. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. We're going to use the command called subplot. So figure is one window, other window, move them around however you like. The subplot command is going to be, as you'd expect, one figure window with subparts to it. So we're going to explore that by starting with the help menu. So we're going to look up subplot in our help menu. And it's going to tell us that. Always look at the first option, uh, first syntax to start with. And I just had the like, wrong one. It takes three numbers in. And if we go down to the description, it'll tell us what those three numbers represent. So it divides the current figure, so that's what we were looking at before, into an m by n grid. So rows and columns. So number of rows, number of columns, grid and creates axes for a subplot specified by position p. And even tells us more. OK, MATLAB numbers its plot by row, such as the first subplot is the first column, first row. Subplot is the second column of the first row. Let me draw that. It'll be a little easier to understand. So if we break it into m by n, let's say, for example, 3 by 2, we would have subplots like this, and MATLAB will number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, So we tell us what kind of grid do we want, how many subplots. And then the numbering is row by row, 
fill in row by row, then go to the next uh, next row, then the next row from there down. For our particular application, let us get the two plots side by side, so on the same row. So we want one row of, of uh, plots, one row of subplots with two columns, and we're going to plot the first one first. And actually, we're going to save this as a new file. We're going to call it w8 and w59, just so we can contrast. That'd be fine. Home. So we're just going to go up to here and, and delete. So we're going to say this first one will be a subplot with uh, two, 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 one by two, one row, two columns. First slot, we're going to get that first plot. And then the second plot, we only change the two at the end here. Then we'll do a histogram of the second column of D. So what are we doing? We say the subplot first. So just like the figure, I have to create the space where we want to plot things. Then I do my plot. And then I say, oh yeah, I still want to keep things as one row, two columns of plots. And then I want to do a second histogram in that second graph. That's nice. It gives us a nice, easily arranged, side-by-side -side view. And we're in the races. We can talk about sizes later on. But at least you can instantly see what you have instead of having to rearrange uh, some of your plots. Just go back to the code for a second. One of the other things we might be interested in, of course, for this data that we have of quiz versus exams is, hey, does quiz performance predict exam performance in any meaningful way? So what we'd like to do is do a scatter plot of that. We don't need a histogram anymore. We just want a regular plot. This is straight out of week one. We're going to plot the first column of D against the second column, all the rows, second column of D, and see what happens. Oh, <laughs> that's not very aesthetic. What do we want to do with this data for real? A dot. Plot as a dot. Yeah, if it's representative individual samples, they should not be connected by lines because student A is not connected to student B. They're just individual uh, points in this graph. And so we add a little dot at the end here to indicate that we want our data to be dots. That looks better. Fantastic. Having seen that, we can see that there is, at least at a glance, a strong influence between a relationship between the uh, quiz grades, which is the horizontal, and the exam grade, which is the vertical. You can tell one of them's out of 18, that was the quizzes, and the exam grades were out of 60, the vertical. So that's the eyeball. OK, there is a relationship. The next step then is to try to figure out, can we quantify that relationship? Let's see how we can do that. What we're going to do is use a tool in this. We're, we're going to go away from the command line for just these two lectures, just these two lectures. And honestly, because it's easier to experiment with this uh, tool built into MATLAB rather than doing things like using polyfit the function. So we're going to go to our graph. And in there, there's a tools bar. And down near the bottom is a tool called basic fitting. So we want to fit data, fit curves to data. And that's what we're going to use tools basic fitting for that. You'll notice, if I leave it on the screen long enough, that there's something actually called a spline interpolant, which sounds familiar because we just looked at, two, looked at it for two lectures. Let's click on that, and it's going to yell at us. <laughs> Repeated x values are not permitted when fitting a cubic interpolating spline. Hey, it even reminds us, hey, yeah, splines are cubic interpolating functions. Uh, why, why is it yelling at us? Why is it not happy with us? <laughs> to actually told us, yeah, we have repeated x values, two y values for the same x value. So if you think of what an interpolant is supposed to do, come on, copy figure. There we go. I'm just going to see if I can slide this into here. Oh, we can. Brilliant. All right. Remember, we're, as soon as you look at this data, you're imagining some kind of not interpolating curve. You're imagining a fit curve. An interpolant has to go through the data. <laughs> so somehow this is supposed to be a function that goes and touches every single data point. But it can't be a function if it does that, because a lot of our data points represent students who got the same mark on the quiz. There is no function that goes through those data points. I cannot build an interpolant. And so MATLAB's completely right when it yelled at us and said, no, 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 this is not the right time for a spline. It is, this is not the right time for a spline, because you can't interpolate. And we don't want to. It would make no sense here. So what we're going to do instead is see if there's something else we can do the old-fashioned way. 
So what we could do is instead of doing splines, we could do things like, hey, let's do a linear fit. Fit me a best fit line through that data. Or we could compare and contrast that with other fits. And you can see I can go quadratic, cubic, all the way up. Let's start with linear and quadratic as a baby steps thing now. What you see is that we get a curve out of both. Well, one's a straight line, linear. And then the quadratic parabola is the best fit line for that. We can have some extra information if we want. We can actually have MATLAB show the equations up there in the top left corner. Uh, we can do some other stuff. You can actually drag the, if the histogram, or sorry, the legend's in your way. You can move it out of the way. Just click and drag it. If you want a little more information, you can have it show a bunch of other information. Like you can say, well, more specifically, what's that linear fit going to be? Well, it's going to be a polynomial with something times x plus a constant, and it tells you what the two values are, the coefficient and the constant there. And it gives you something about the residuals. We'll talk more about that later. But there's a fair amount of information that you can explore. And it's easy to turn on and off graphs and say, I'm just interested in the cubic, maybe, for this graph. 